Hey gang, it's Leslie L. Harrington here to help you guide you through a beautiful morning practice for yoga. Nice way to wake up, get the blood moving, but also set your tone for the rest of the day. So I hope you join me. All you need to do is clear out a little space. You don't even need a yoga mat, but if you do, that's great. Uh, it helps uh, for a slip. So you can point the yoga mat straight toward the video. I just have it turned sideways because I'll be moving on the mat back and forth. You don't have to follow the directions of which way I go because I'm just showing you different angles. So you can face directly toward the video itself the whole time. Well, thanks for joining me and we'll get started. The first thing we're gonna do is find our place and ground. So let's find our way to mountain pose. As we stand here, we can rock back and forth a few times. Just finding our way to the four corners of our feet. So think of two points in the ball of the foot and perhaps two points or one point in the heel and make those connections to the earth. Let's wiggle our toes. Settling into those toes, we can bend our knees a little, finding our hips directly over those um, ankles. We'll inhale, shoulders up by our ears and exhale, roll them down. Inhale, shoulders up, back and down. Good, last one. Inhale, shoulders up, back and down. Let's take our palms facing toward the video just so that we squeeze the shoulder blades a little toward each other, giving us beautiful proper alignment for our entire body, lengthening from the crown of the head to the sky, all the way through the body, anchoring into those feet, into the earth, feeling as if we could be stretched between the sky and the earth here. Let's take a few moments just to tune in, inhaling and exhaling. Let's start to find the breath in through the nose, and the breath out through the nose if that's comfortable. We try to breathe in and out through the nose through the entire practice, just to keep us centered and focused, to bring us into the present moment. If we can start to find our deep diaphragmatic breath as we inhale through the nose, the belly expands forward. And as we exhale, bring the belly back. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling, belly expands. Exhaling, belly contracts. Last one. Inhaling, belly expanding. Exhaling, belly contracting. And perhaps we set an intention for the day for our practice. Maybe it's just staying with the breath. Anytime the mind starts to wander, we bring it back to noticing the breath. And here, as we stand in our mountain posture, remind ourselves that this sturdy quality, how mountains stand the test of time, weather any storm, and we can do the same. And we try to find these same qualities in every pose that we do. And just remembering that our yoga practice today is more about the journey and not about the destination. So we'll fit the pose to our bodies and not making our bodies fit into a particular On our next inhalation, we'll take our hands overhead, reaching to the sky, exhaling to a forward fold, hinging from our hips, one way forward, and wiping our nose. Use the outer glutes, engage and let's rise back up to the sky into mountain. Exhaling forward fold, we'll do this a few more times. Inhale, reaching up and over, and exhaling, coming forward. Let's do one more. Inhale, reaching up. This time when we come into our forward fold, we exhale and stay here. Hands can be on the earth or on the shins. Elongating through the spine, bending knees a little more, and opening the knee down the legs. And then we'll step back into downward facing dog. So we just take our feet back. So we're creating our hips floating at the top of the knee. Alternating heel presses here, so we sink into one heel, then the opposite knee, and switch. We're pressing through the four corners of the palms into the length of the fingers. Spread those fingers wide, middle finger pointing forward. And pressing a little more into that meaty part between the thumb and that index finger here. That helps to take pressure off of the wrist. A slight bend into those elbows and shoulders drawing into our back pockets. We're walking the dog just a little bit more. And then letting those heels sink to the earth, drawing the hips back. And then slowly bend those knees, finding child's pose. We sink those hips toward those heels. Hands can be underneath our forehead, or hands can be by our sides. So we can stack our hands underneath our forehead, or just 
placing one on top of each other, or even drawing the hands by our sides, whatever feels best to us. Knees can be close or wide, but we have the toes toward each other in child's pose. This is a beautiful pose to come to at any time during our practice. Whenever we need rest, we need rest as much as we need to work today. So find what option feels best to us in our practice. Last full breath here and inhale. And then exhale. And then we'll take ourselves up to all fours. So we'll come into a tabletop like position. So we have our wrists underneath the shoulders. We can always use wrists for wrists if that feels more comfortable. We can bend those elbows. Those knees are hip-width distance apart. Let's take our back into a happy cat like that. And round the back for the back. And then switching to the opposite sinking. Through the heart center. Let's move a few times at our own pace through cat and cow. We want to say good morning to our back. Wake up the spine. We might feel a little tightness in one area versus the other. So we can imagine our breath going to that area and loosening it up for ourselves. As we warm up the muscles along the spine, it might at first feel like a bite chain, each vertebrae clicking or each segment of the back moving. And then eventually as we warm up a little more, we'll feel it more fluid along the spine, more supple. We like supple, suppleness of the spine. Last round in each direction. As we come back to neutral, we'll sink back into child's pose once again. Hands can be underneath our forehead, or arms can be by our side. And since we're just kind of getting up in the morning or finding some movement, we might still be some, have some tightness from our sleep, through our back, through our hips, through our knees. And just knowing eventually the body will start to wake up a little bit more. Let's take those hands, extend them forward into extended child's pose. Reaching forward, hands are shoulder width apart. We'll inhale, lift forward to a kneeling plank. Let's sink back to child's pose. Let's do that a few more times, warming up the upper body. We inhale, lift forward, lengthening from the crown of the head to the knees, and back. Let's move and breathe. Just appreciate being here in this moment. The sensations of the body. Welcoming the sun rising. We're just welcoming a new day. We can start to add in our yogi push-up. That's our crocodile, we bend the elbows and then press it back. Let's do that a few more times. Inhale, coming on forward. Exhaling as we press it on back. We don't have to go down to 90 degrees with that yogi push-up. We're keeping the elbows by the sides. Last one here. And then we'll find our way into downward facing dog again. So curling those toes underneath, lifting those hips high to the sky. We're thinking of our crown of our head toward those thumbs. So elongating here from the wrists to the hips, the hips to those heels. And it's okay if we bend those knees a little to take any pressure out of our lower back. One last breath here. And let's go ahead and start to walk you forward to a forward fold. Let's bend those knees a little, use those outer glutes, inhale, rise into the sky. Let's find our first chair, exhale and surface with those arms. Inhale, rise it on up. And we'll do that again two more times, exhaling into chair. Good, last one here. Inhale, reach it up, hands to heart center, exhale. So we can stay here and just take it wide. We can turn on our mats, whatever feels comfortable. We're gonna do some variations of moonflower and sunflower, some yogic squats to warm up the entire body. So we want the toes kind of pointing to the corners of the mat or diagonally toward the roof. Let's inhale, take the hands overhead like a five-pointed star. Exhale, I'm taking the elbows down by our ribs. Inhale, lift it up. Now if we're taking care of our shoulders, or we have a gentle shoulder today, we can take our hands to the heart center, our hands to those thighs. Now keeping in mind when we sink down into that squat, we want to take the knees over the center of the ankles or before that, but not going past those ankles here. So continuing to flow like using the lat pulled out like an ocean. Elbows in by the ribs as we come down. Inhale as we lift, exhale as we sink back. Last two. Good, last one. We'll find into sunflower, so we'll find thumb to thumb, pinky to pinky as we hinge from our hips. Inhale and exhale as we move. Maybe we're moving at a different pace because we're matching our movement to our own breath. 
as well breathe at different rates. And that's a good thing. So just be mindful of where we're at and what's going on within our body space. This should get the heart moving and pumping. And also we get to think of this beautiful sun that we're drawing with our hands and welcoming the day. And actually thinking of taking some heat into the body. We just start to feel a little bit warmer as we move. One last round. Let's inhale, take it up, and find sun pose. Just hands out by your side. Now, why do we call the sun pose? Well, it's because it creates some heat in the body like the sun radiating on ourselves. But we can think of the center of our body as the sun. And our arms or legs are like the rays of the sun. Two more breaths here, take it easy. Inhale and exhale. One last full breath here, inhaling through the nose, belly expands. And exhale, belly returns. Inhale, lift it up to the sky. And exhale, step it back into mountain pose. So we'll get started into some sun salutations to really warm up. If we're not already feeling a little warm, we'll definitely feel some warmth by the end of this. I'll show you the two variations and you can choose the one that works for your body and you can keep within one. But let's get started at the top of our mat. I'm just turning to the side for your full view. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, forward fold. Right leg steps back into a kneeling lunge and curling the back toes. Lengthen through the spine here. And then step back to child's pose. Hands extended. We just come forward into that kneeling plank. We've been here before. Bend those elbows into a hammer. Hold here. Sink the hips. Cobra. Heart center lifts. Release to the earth. Use the core. Press this back. So it's not just the arms. We're using the body strength. Right leg steps through and forward. You can always grab that ankle. Hold here. And lengthen through the heart. And then step it forward, forward fold. And then inhale, rise to the sky. Let's find chair, circle sweeping those arms. Exhale. Inhale, lift it up to the sky. Exhale, forward folding. Left leg steps back into that kneeling lunge. We uncurl the back toes, putting pressure onto the shoelace part of the foot. Folding here. And then press it back into child's pose with extended arms. Remembering that those hands are just shoulder width apart, we inhale, lift forward to that kneeling plank. Let are not sinking down. We're keeping lifted, but still lengthened. Exhale to that hover. We're finding our crocodile. Sink those hips into our cobra. This is a small arch to the back. And then you release and then use the core to pull us back into child's pose. Left leg swoops through and forward. You can always grab that ankle if you want. Holding here and lengthening. And then step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise it to the sky. And let's find our chair. Sinking here. Inhale, rise and up. Exhale. I'll turn to the other direction. Forward fold. Right leg steps back into a lunge. We can be kneeling or we can be lifted. The choice is ours. Lengthen through the heart. And then step it back to downward facing dog or child's pose. Let's lift forward into our plank of choice. Kneeling or lifted. Exhale to our hover. Upward facing dog or cobra. In upward facing dog, everything is off the mat. Pulling our heart through. Shoulders away from our ears. Use the core back to down dog or child's pose. Right leg steps through and forward into our lunge of choice. We can drop the back knee, that feels better. And curl the back toes. And then step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise to the sky. Exhale into chair. Good, one last round. Inhale, lifting up, exhale, forward fold it. Left leg steps back into our lunge of choice. So remember, we can be lifted or we can be kneeling, so we can drop it down. And then press it back into child's pose or into downward facing dog. Come on forward to our kneeling plank or full plank. Exhale to our hover. Sink those hips, fighting cobra. Or we have upward facing dog, release. Let's press it back to child's pose or downward facing dog. Left leg sweeps through and forward. Remember, we can be kneeling or full here into our launch. And then step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise it to the sky. Chair, exhaling. Let's find chair a few more times. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale. We can always have hands at heart center or hands on those thighs as we flow. So the choice is ours. Choosing the options that work best for us. Good, good. Last one. Sitting into chair as we hold here. Hands can be forward or at heart center or on those thighs as we pause, sinking the weight into the heels. 
we can wiggle those toes. We can stay here, or we can lift those heels. Take one heel up, and then perhaps the other. Or just having the other switching. So we can have both heels on the ground for more strength through the legs and greater stretch through the calves. Or we can lift those heels so we have strength in both the legs and the calf itself too. So depending on what we need today, every day is different. Let's sink into those heels. Inhale, rise it up to the sky. Exhale into a forward fold. Holding here. Let's take the hands, float them to our shins. Binding monkey. This is a half lift. Shoulders toward our hips, elongating through the spine. So crown of the head is reaching forward. We're gazing at the mat. And release to a forward fold. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lifting. Now my knees may be slightly bent. And exhale, forward fold. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Let's step back with the right foot into warrior one. As we take the arms overhead, reaching up here. I'm gonna switch to the other side. So you can have the view of what we're doing. The back heel is on the ground. The front knee is over the front ankle. Arms are reaching overhead for warrior one. So we're trying to square the shoulders forward. And we're holding here. We're holding into our strong warrior one. Let's start to flow with those arms, elbows by our sides. Kind of like our lap pull down and our moon flower. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale. Good, last one. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, open that chest. Squeezing the shoulder blades toward each other. Inhale, reach the hands overhead. Opening for warrior two. Now we're going to shift and open the shoulders and the hips to the side. So to the side of the mat, we're gazing over that front middle finger. That front knee is working toward being over that front ankle. Now if we take a peek down and we see the knee is kind of coming in a little bit, let's draw it back over the center of the ankle. And then reverse warrior, reverse that hand, lift the front hand to the sky. Now it's not about how much we can reach toward the back of the room, it's about lengthening through the side waist here. So we can gaze up or gaze at the back foot. And then side angle, we'll take the elbow to the thigh, back hand toward the sky. Stacking our shoulders, we can gaze up here or gaze down, depending on how the neck or shoulders feel. Let's find our first warrior once again. And cartwheel the hands, spread that front foot, step it back down, facing up. We can hold here, we can find child's pose, or if we want some more heat for today, let's take it forward into our vinyasa or our flow. That's where we come forward into a kneeling or full plank. Shoulders just past the wrist. Exhale to our hover. And then up with facing down, we flip our feet. Everything's off of the ground. Or we can find cobra where we're on the ground and just using the strength of the lower back to lift the chest off the ground. Use the core, draw us back to downward facing dog. Right leg rises to the sky. Through and forward, we find our warrior one. So we can always grab that ankle if we want. So the back heel onto the earth. Take the hands to the thighs. Inhale, rise it overhead. Those cactus arm flow as we exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Last one. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, holding here. I'm going to switch sides so that when I turn it open, it makes it nice and easy. Let's go ahead and open up to warrior two. Reverse warrior. Feeling that length and that stretch from the side waist here. That back heel is trying to be the furthest thing on the back. And then side angle here. Let's find the reverse warrior once again. And cartwheel the hands. Bring that front foot. Step it forward this time. Into a forward fold. Inhale, rise into the sky. And then we find our chair circles between those arms. Let's find two more chair full or we can hold in chair. Exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Pausing here, hands forward or at heart center, or hands on those thighs, we can lift those heels. Just into a balanced chair. And then sinking into those heels, inhale, rise it up now. Exhale, forward fold. Let's find three monkeys, so we inhale, lift the hands to the shins. A little bend in those knees to take any pressure out of the lower back. Exhale, forward fold, two more. Inhale, reach it up. And exhale. 
last one, in out, reach it out. And then exhale. Release into that forward fold, left leg steps back into our warrior one. So we've been here before. Keep the front knee over the front ankle, get the hands to the thighs, and then take the hands up ahead. Let's open up for warrior two. Reverse warrior. Inside angle. So we're not collapsing into the shoulder, keeping lifted through the core. Reverse warrior. And then to side angle. Let's do that one more time. Keeping those warrior two legs strong and not moving. Side angle. Now we have the option to add on. We can stay here with side angle or extended side angle. So take that hand to the earth. Top hand reaches forward. And we're just elongating here. The top hand palm facing down. We can be gazing down to the side or up toward the sky. Now pressing the upper arm into the leg, the leg into the upper arm. Should have our shoulders stacked. The fun part is coming into reverse warrior from here. So use that core. Reverse warrior, those legs stay the same, good thing. And cartwheel the hands. Bring that front foot, we're stepping back for downward facing dog. So we have the option to stay here. Find child pose or take the time to flow. Our vinyasa, we have the knee with our full version. Inhale forward to kneel your full plank, shoulders past the wrist, exhale to our hover. Upward facing dog or cobra. And then back for a downward facing dog. Left leg to the sky. We'll take it through and forward, coming into our warrior one. Inhaling, reaching hands over head. And then opening for warrior two. Those transitions between reverse warrior and side angle. We inhale, reverse warrior to side angle. Remember when we find those transitions, it's not just about the pose, it's about the in-between also. So honor the transitions themselves. Last one. Inside angle. Holding here. Now find what's comfortable, it may be different on this side than the last variation. We can stay here or find our extended side angle. So the bottom hand reaches toward the earth, and the top hand can stay lifted toward the sky, or we can reach it forward. The back heel is trying to be the furthest thing on the mat, it's okay if it's not. I know that we can always leave something for next time. One more breath here. Pressing that upper arm into the thigh, the thigh to the arm. And then we're finding reverse warrior, so use the core. Lift and reverse. And let's go ahead and curl those hands. Bring that front foot. Lift the back heel. So we're in a lunge. Step it forward, forward, forward. Inhale, rise into the sky. We we'll get that three chair flow. Exhaling, sinking down. Inhale, lift it up. We're really working on our foot bond to the earth, our padabanda, and also mulabanda, which is our pelvic floor. So creating kind of a lower ab drawing in. Think of that through the bottom of the torso. That just helps to keep the energy within, sitting into chair and holding here. Hands are forward or at heart center or on thighs. The choice is ours. Option to lift into balance with one or both feet. Nice and calm and steady with our breath, no matter what's going on, no matter how much the legs are working. Sink into those heels, inhale, rise into the sky. Exhaling, forward folding. Let's do those three monkeys, so half lift. Ex and exhale, forward fold. Two more, inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Last one, inhale, half lift. And exhale, nice work. Step it back to downward facing dog. Holding here in downward facing dog. I'm gonna notice the heart rate will be lifted. We're just working to be calm in this posture here. And a lot of people say this is a resting posture. For some it is. And for others it feels like a lot of work. But we're maintaining our restful mind. Let's come forward into a plank here. Hold into plank. From crown of the head to the heels. We'll find Vashisthasana, which is our side plank. So option to find a kneeling side plank. We take the right knee underneath the right hip. Kick stand on that right leg and left hand to the sky. So we can stay here in this variation. 
or if you want the full side plank. We're in our plank and we just pivot the feet to one side. Right hand rises. Holding here. We can stay stacked, we can lift one leg. And then let's go ahead and find our way back to our plank, no matter where the side plank we were in. And we'll switch to the other side. So for our kneeling side plank, we come into it from our full plank. Left knee underneath our hip. Kick stand it out. And then right hand to the sky. I'll turn around. So we can be in our full side plank and just pivot and lift. Also can step and lift that top leg. So we've got lots of variations here. Choosing the one that works for us on this side. Remember the wrist is underneath the shoulder, not forward. And let's come back to plank. And downward facing dog. We'll take the right leg and reach it to the sky. Through and forward for our warrior one. Back heel to the earth. Inhale, rise on up to the sky. We're opening first. Warrior two. So open the hips and the shoulders to the long edge of the mat. And triangle, so we lengthen the front leg. Reach those hips back and then hand to the thigh. So staying here, I'll turn around. So we can find support with that hand to the thigh, to the shin. If we like and our core is strong, top hand reaches forward. If we'd like a little more sensation, feel free to take the bottom hand, or reach it forward. So calm with the breath, that slow inhale and exhale. We're not losing that because every posture that we want should be sturdy and calm. Replacing the hand to that cup and slowly come on up. Nice, let's take our hands up for warrior two. Gazing over that front middle finger and knowing that we can be the peaceful warrior within. The shoulders are away from our ears. And then as we're ready, curl those hands. From the front foot, step back to downward facing dog. Last option to flow in our practice today. So if we'd like, we come forward to our plank, kneeling our full, exhale to our hover, upward facing dog or cobra, and then back to our downward facing dog. We'll take the left leg to the sky, and through and forward, finding our warrior one. So come on up to warrior one, opening to warrior two, and triangle the length of the front leg. Let's make our hips a little sassy. We'll take our hips to the back of the row. And then reach it forward where that hand lands, whether it's on the thigh or the shin, is where we should be. Now there's nothing special about coming to the earth here. So if we're taking our spine out of alignment, so not over the front thigh, we might be looking like this. This is not what we want. We want to be over with the torso over that front thigh. So it doesn't matter if our hand is here, we feel more sensation in these areas. We don't want to add any additional pressure to the spine. Imagine as if we're pressed between two sheets of glass here. Another option is to take the hand forward, elongating that reach and that stretch. We can stay here or if we'd like, taking the bottom hand and reaching forward. Now keep in mind what feels best for the body today. Last breath here. We're turning the hand to the thigh or to the shin, and then slowly coming back to warrior two. And cartwheel those hands, frame the foot, and then step it forward, stepping forward to forward fold, inhale, rise it to the sky. Hands to heart center. Back into our mountain, hands by our sides, palms facing forward. Give our heat feet about hip with a smooth heart. And let's find our way to some balanced poses. So today, we'll be offering pigeon pose. So standing pigeon, let's lift that left foot. And then we start to bend that standing leg a little. If that's comfortable, let's cross that leg up and over, so ankle past that thigh. Then hands at heart center as we slowly sit down. And then this is our standing pigeon pose. Remember, toes toward the shin, knee sinks. You might feel a nice stretch into that outer hip. It's a lot of work for that standing leg. It's not about coming forward, it's more about sinking down into that standing leg. And really our balance postures are more about 
keeping focus in the present moment. Because when our mind starts to wander, we might start to come out of the pose. So if we can return to that easy inhale and easy exhale, we lost it at any time during our practice. And then slowly sink perhaps a little more. And then as we're ready, we can come on up and shake it out. It's always a good stretch. I find most of my clients really love that hip stretch here, whether we're doing it in a standing balance or in a chair or even on the ground. So let's find our way to the other side. So we'll lift that right heel, shoulders back, nice and tall, bend that standing leg, activate the core. Now, if we, could, we can stay here or we can take it a little further if we'd like. Let's take the hands at heart center, cross that ankle, pass that thigh, toes toward the shin to keep that knee nice and safe as we settle down. Want to keep the hips try to be parallel sometimes or uh, on a horizon line sometimes one sh shifts or lifts as we sit down a little bit further whatever's comfortable on this side good let's find that ease in the posture and the balance in the moment remember we can always be holding on to a wall or something steady to help us to get into this or always can be in a chair or seated doing the same posture we can close our eyes if we'd like more sensation. Last one. Breath in and breath out. And then slowly releasing. Nice work. Oh, should feel nice and warm, body is active. And now we get to take it down to enjoy the stretching. We wanted to do the warm up so that we could get to the benefit of the stretching while keeping the body safe. So let's take our hands overhead and mountain. Exhale, forward folding. Hinging from our hips. Hold and pause here. Perhaps we find a hug for those legs today. So let's take those hands behind those legs, wrap them around. We can hold our elbows. We can bend the knees as little, as much as we like. Let the head be super heavy. Perhaps we nod the head back and forth. Let it surrender here. How lovely is it? As we release the hands to the earth, let's set that back for downward facing dog. As we give ourselves a few breaths here, just because we're coming and winding down our practice, it doesn't mean that it's just sitting on the ground and stretching. We're still working. Enjoy the benefits of our entire practice. One more breath here. We'll take the right leg and reach it to the sky. Let's bend the knee and stack our hips on top of each other. Remember that toes toward the shin movement in our pigeon pose? Same kind of movement here. So activate the toes toward the shins here. Press that heel back. Stacking our hips. And we'll come into pigeon on the ground. So we'll bring that right knee forward to the right wrist. Just setting it on the inside here. Taking the toes toward the shins here. And the back toes unwinding. So we're nice and tall here. Now, if we're sinking into that right hip quite a bit, let's go ahead and take a block and put it underneath that right hip or even a blanket. We have the option to stay here or we can come down to those elbows. This is a beautiful stretch to get into that hip like we did in our balance option. Now, if this is not comfortable, so staying here if you're, if you're comfortable, if this is not comfortable on your knee, I'll flip around and you can see what we can do on our back. So this is the option if that is not comfortable on your knee at all. Coming onto our backs for reclining pigeon. Same benefits here, but very protective of that knee. So let's give ourselves another breath or two here. So whichever variation, whether we're on our back or we're forward facing down. If we're on our back, staying here. But if we're forward in pigeon, Let's go ahead and find our way with our hands underneath our shoulders. And then step it back to downward facing dog. So curl the toes under and press it back. We can shake out that leg. Right leg can circle around. Shake it out as we need. And then preparing for the other side. So left leg to the sky. And bend the knee and stack the hips. Try to open the hips toward the side. We're being even through the hands. And then toes to the shin on that lifted leg. Let's find another breath or two here. And then as we're ready, bring that left knee forward. Kind of 
right inside the back of your left wrist. Extend the back leg, lifting the heart center, gazing forward. Again, we can always take padding underneath our hip. Just notice especially if we're sinking into that left hip, we're avoiding that. So if it's not on the ground, that's okay. But we just want to be even through our hips. We can stay here or we can come forward. Nice stretch into those hips. Remember, we can always be on our back doing our reclining pigeon if that feels better to us. So just think of surrendering here. We can relax the head onto those hands. We can make fists, we can use a block. Lots of different options here as we imagine the breath going into that hip or into anywhere that we're feeling it. So let's take that inhale and that exhale, transforming any tightness, any resistance into space, into resilience, into expansion and possibility. Last breath here. Let's walk those hands back underneath our shoulders. And then curl the toes under, lift it back to downward facing dog, that three-legged dog if you want to shake out that left leg at all. Then if we're laying on our back, doing our reclining pigeon, we're going to be coming into a seated position. So let's help ourselves down to all fours and take those legs and swing them out forward. As we extend those legs here into our seated staff pose, we can always have our hinds by our sides to elongate through the spine. We can always bend the knees a little bit to help take any pressure out of the lower back. Staying here or inhaling, reaching hands overhead, exhaling to forward fold. Just coming to a position that we're resting forward with our heart drawn toward those knees. We can surrender the head. It doesn't matter about how far we come down or how far we don't come down. It's about feeling the stretch in the right place for ourselves. So we may be feeling it through the back of those calves, through the back of those hamstrings. So basically the back of the legs somewhere. We don't want it just only in our back. If it's only in our back, then let's bend the knees a little bit more. Or we can always roll up the back of the mat to help elevate the hips, and that'll take pressure out of there too. Last breath here. And let's use those hands to help ourselves up. Let's find a seated butterfly pose. So soles of the feet together. We can have our hands by our hips once again, lifting the heart center, sitting up nice and tall. We can take those hands forward and then we're slowly releasing forward. So go ahead and relax the head down. I'm just gazing up at the camera. But relaxing through the neck and the shoulders. If we close our eyes here, it really helps us to let go of competition and letting go of judgment. Because it really doesn't matter how far we're getting down or moving into a posture. It's more about how it feels within our body space. So we release any expectations of where we should be at in the posture. Each day we will feel different. Each day it'll look different on our bodies. And still continuing to find that expanse on the inhalation and the exhalation. Can we release around the eyes, relaxing around the jaw? Maybe we notice after another breath or two, maybe the chest is falling closer toward those feet. Kind of feel a surrendering here. And let's help ourselves up. We'll do a reclining twist, so let's close those knees. Turn to our sockets on our mat, or just with our feet toward the video. With our knees in toward our chest, hands behind those knees, we roll down one vertebra at a time. Bring those knees into the chest. A little gentle sway side to side here. For a reclining twist, we'll take our arms out by our sides, creating a T position with our body, and then slowly let those knees drop over to one side. We could stay here, gazing toward the sky, or closing the eyes, or 
revolving the head away from those knees. You can take one hand to the outside of those legs. You can always extend those legs. And just relaxing here, give ourselves a few moments to enjoy the benefits of the practice where we feel a little more awake, a little more energized for our morning routine. But know that this is a good subtle energy to set the rest of the day. It's important to have a morning routine each and every day that helps us to remember what is most important to ourselves. Let's find that deep diaphragmatic breath here as we inhale, belly expands, exhale, belly contracts. Even if it's not a 45 minute yoga practice in the morning, doing it as often as we can. But what is your morning routine in general? How can we set the tone of our day? Hands by our sides, we'll return those bent legs to bent legs and then exhaling, lifting the knees to the sky. Inhale here, exhaling to the other side. Ooh, just got a little crack out of that. Extend the leg, one hand to that opposite leg if we'd like, and then we can turn our head away from those knees, just enjoying the gentle twist through our spine. We can close our eyes here. I'm feeling that belly breath as we inhale through the nose, belly expands, and the exhale, belly contracts. Perhaps we start to think of one word and how we want to feel the rest of the day, or what would we like to invite into our day. Maybe if we were worried about some events going on, we can invite in peace, invite in serenity, and be calm amongst the storm. Last belly breath here. So we turn the hands out to the side, to the teeth. We exhale, lift the knees back to the sky. And then we find our feet onto the earth for a quick bridge. Let's place our feet about our feet away from our glutes, hands by our sides, roll the shoulders under, gazing toward the sky, keep the head neutral to protect the head. And then pressing into those feet, we float those hips high toward the sky. Returning to our foot bond, so two points in the ball, foot one point in the heel, feeling the earth beneath those points and the entire foot, even out to those toes. Let's lift those hips a little higher if that feels good. Or we can interlace the hands behind the back. Roll one shoulder under and then the other to lift the chest even more. Option to stay here or lifting one leg to the sky. And let's go ahead and switch. If we were lifting one leg, option is to keep both legs on the ground. Taking both feet, returning them back to the earth, lift the hips a little bit higher. And then arms out by our sides to release one of our great at time coming down to the earth. Let's bring our knees into the chest, little circles here. The hands can be behind those knees for comfort. And we're moving through the core center. And switching directions with the circles of our knees. Because this is a morning practice, we'll be doing a very short Shavasana. So let's find our feet onto the ground, take them out to the outer edges of the mat, tent the knees, bend the knees toward each other. We'll place the left hand on the heart, the right hand onto the belly. We can close our eyes here. Let's feel the inhale of the belly rise to the sky. And the exhale as the belly returns back to the earth. Bringing into mind that one word, how we like to set our attention for the day. Perhaps serenity, perhaps energy for the rest of the day. Perhaps connecting to who we truly are, not getting caught up in some of the actions that go around us. 
and envision something beautiful for the day. We're feeling calm and relaxed here with every breath. The right hand you can feel lifting gently on the inhalation and the exhalation as it falls back. Here we get to connect our mind, our heart, and our body. So we can set off into a balanced day. As we slowly roll to our sides, use those hands to help ourselves up. We'll come to a seated position. So just easy, easy seated pose, supasana, hands resting onto those knees. Let's inhale, take those shoulders up, back, and down. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, shoulders up, back, and down. Inhale, shoulders up, back, and down. Feel that elongation through the entire spine from the crown of the head to those hips. Noticing how we're feeling here. With hands at heart center, we just a gentle bow of our chin toward our chest acknowledgement for ourselves for taking time for our practice today, a gift that gives to us, but also extends to others as we take care of ourselves. And just gazing forward, I want to thank you for being here today with me. Namaste. Mm -hmm.